Hey everybody, welcome to Back Issues, I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So I have been asked to do this story ever since Rob did it on Comics Explained. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a little bit of the runoff oh, will trickle into our mouths. <laughs> trickle into our mouths. The fact is, uh, I picked up this copy of Marvel's Companion uh, at a comic shop for half price, and I immediately recognized the cover, and I was like, oh God. Because Marvel Ruins is a two-part miniseries that nobody asked for, <laughs> that came completely out of nowhere, does nothing, and then disappears just as quickly. <laughs> and it's in this companion with like a bunch of other weird Vertigo-esque stuff that Marvel had done in the 90s. Marvel's like, well, how come DC wins all these fucking awards for all their like realistic comics? We did Marvels. Marvels became before Kingdom Come. Hey, we got Alex Ross, what the fuck? <laughs> we did all the things. We did all the things right. And it's like, yeah, you just missed it by like a year. Sorry, Marvel. Are they all part of the Marvel's continuity? No. Oh. No, it's then more how like- how is it the Marvel's companion? I think it's the Marvel's companion because they did Marvel's yeah. from Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross and it was a critical darling. Yeah. And they're like, What's how do we <laughs> cash, cash in, in on um, that? Right. It's very confusing. They should have just come up with an imprint. Yeah. Well, they did. They, they Marvel's done a fair amount of imprints. It's just that they never have any faith in them, and then oh, yeah. they throw Maybe them the away. Ultimate. Right. Yeah. Well, the Ultimate Line is like uh, one of the most successful yeah. imprints they ever had. But they also had and like Max. They right? had Max. Yeah. Max was the one, but Max yeah. came later. They, they this didn't is before think of Max. It. This is before Max. And if it had been maybe they would have gone even further. Mm. And so I'm very thankful that they didn't have Max yet. <laughs> so this is ultimately drawn by Cliff and Therese Nielsen and Chris Muller, and it's written by Warren Ellis. Now, because of the world we live in today, you can't say Warren Ellis without also saying he's a creep and he's trying to do some kind of recompense for what he's done over the last, I don't know, 25 years of his career. Yeah. And so uh, you'll be the judge of whether you can divorce a creator from their work. I'm not going to do that today, mm. uh, but I will not also shy away from saying that I believe his accusers and he has never tried to refute them. Does it mean we shouldn't cover his stories? I don't know. Marvels comes out in 94. Ruins comes out in 95. Okay. Marvels is, people talk about how like, Ruins is the anti-Marvels, but Marvels is not a hopeful, idyllic snapshot of the Marvel Universe. It features a character named Philip Sheldon, who is a photographer, who is a peer of J. Jonah Jameson, loses an eye to a superhero battle, and photographs the world of the Marvels. Mm -hmm. And uh, loses his nerve when he watches Spider-Man kill his girlfriend by accident. Mm. But he writes this book called Marvels and it's just about the age of Marvels. And it's just that window of time when the Marvel Universe was created but given it in real time through the lens of a human being on the ground. Okay. So it's like this really cool story that gives you a, an odd perspective of the Marvel Universe. Or an, and, and I would hesitate to call it idyllic because I think it's more of an honest slash biased opinion of the Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. And then there's Ruins, <laughs> which is another universe okay. where everything's wrong. <laughs> That's it, everything's, everything's wrong. wrong. That's like the tagline, everything's ruined. Marvel <laughs> ruins, everything's fucked. That's it. Stop me for heard this premise. It's about Philip Sheldon and he's writing a book called Marvels about the world he lives in talking about the superheroes in it. That's weird. That's I it. I feel Same. like we did that book. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so it's like a cracked mirror version of Marvel's? Yeah, it's Marvel's again, but written by an emo 12 year old. That's it. I mean, it's super just, you know what would be fucking crazy? That's every page. And that's why I hate ruins and why like, everyone's like, dude, you gotta do ruins, man. And I'm like, why? Do like, you want me angry? Why? It, Cause it's just- it's You're just, not gonna like me when I'm angry. It's just misery and <laughs> Yeah, Gross. I love that shit. Yeah, isn't it fucking dark? Like a man of steel and shit. Yes, cracking necks. Body uh, horror, bitch. Yeah. Like that's that's what uh, ruins is. And it's oh like no. ugh. But we are gonna we're gonna we're gonna go over it. So say goodbye to the world of I don't Marvels. Go there. And say hello to the world of ruins.
Uh, so the concept. Old Man Logan with all the creepy hulks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Get used to like worse than that, I guess. Yeah, it's worse than that. I mean, like that's. <sighs> okay. Remember when Hulk ate Logan? Remember when Hulk had sex with his cousin and had multiple children from yeah. her, and all of them were gross inbred babies? Yeah. yeah. That's worse than Wolverine being devoured by the Hulk. Not I, cool. I, and what's frustrating is the art is <sighs> spectacular. Mm. So, but so a series of paintings. I mean, there is nothing some of them. better than horrifying scenes depicted well. Yeah, that's true. I beg to differ. So here's their like log line for Bruins. For every kiss, a bullet in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. For we every action, strong. <laughs> for every action, a reaction. For every event, there exists a potential, a mirror event, an exact opposite possibility. If the world you know is one of marvels, where heroic women walk invisibly through horror and men of fire ride the upper reaches of the air, then only a misstep or a stopped heartbeat away is a world of ruins. Mm. So it's it's that something goes wrong and now we have this. Right. But yeah, they're saying it's a different universe. It is a different, it's universe. A different universe. But that makes sense. it's not that like you pull a thread on one thing. It's not like a butterfly no, effect book. No, it's just like every single time something could go wrong it in does. your universe it doesn't. Yes. But here it does. It's Murphy's law. This it's is Murphy's Marvel's universe. law. <laughs> this is like the dark multiverse. It's, yes, it's pre... <laughs> it's the stories the, that shouldn't have happened. Yeah. Yeah, Ruins is from the Dark Multiverse. And it was hurled back in time, so it became <laughs> a thing in 1995. Yeah. Instead of, you know, when they invented the Dark Multiverse. So This is called retro retconning. Yeah, there you go. So a Patriot missile blows up the Avengers Quinjet and kills most of the Avengers. Oh. Which Philip Sheldon watches. Okay, a Patriot missile? Why? Really? Of course, yeah. Yeah. Because the Avengers are subversive radicals that it mean to end the tyrannic control of America oh. over its citizens. Yeah, because the America you know is not the America of ruins. Right. It's not even it's not even like things were the way you remember them and then this, you can get acclimated. No, the world's already completely weird and messed up. Mm, for some reason. For some reason, yeah. and the Marvel heroes are equally twisted and messed up. So like America began we're already cannibals. I mean, practically. <laughs> but Sheldon feels in his heart that there's something wrong. No, he does not bump into Uatu or something at the end of this. <laughs> he was like, you're right. You're my avatar. I made you feel that there was something wrong with your... You're a cosmic multiversal tuning fork. Right. No, no. He's just... he. It's just that he lives in a world of misery and pain. And so he's not a complete nihilist. And so he believes that there must be some something that has gone wrong to make the world that he lives in. Mm -hmm. That's, it, it's, it's for him to be our avatar. Yeah, it's right. for us to sympathize. Yes, we're like, yes, something's gone wrong. Horribly wrong, Phil. <laughs> right, because if he just took it in stride, it would be weird and alienating. It would be even well, more alienating. Another crappy day, here <laughs> yeah. we go. Exactly, another day in hell, here we are. Like, that would be unrelatable. Yeah. As opposed to literally every other character that Phil will encounter is that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They're like, everything's fucked and horrible. Watch. And you're like, no! It feels like, ugh. He's world weary. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I mean, he's, in this, he's dying. Phil is already oh, dying. Of course. I mean, yeah, of course. Of course he's dying. Yeah. yeah, no, but he's dying. He'll be doing <laughs> faster than the rest of us. So. Well, he's older. That makes sense. That's yeah. true. He's doing this thing where he's doing research. He wants to write a book. And the book would be about this world of marvels. There's, as messed up as the world is, there's even more messed up stuff. And that's the world of what would be the superheroes. That there's these crazy ass things out there in this world. And Phil is gonna document and explain them. Okay. That's, and that's like gonna be kind of his last thing he does. His last contribution to the world will be, look at all of it at once. As opposed to like, you know, you gradually seeing something horrific every like couple of years. <laughs> right. For the rest of your he's life. He's gonna dump it all on he's you. Gonna, he's gonna document it in one big totemic graphic right. novel that you can be like there. Called Ruins. And yeah. He's like, look at it. Phil is going over this dossier about Tony Stark. Tony Stark was going to use his big brain and scientific advancements to end the Vietnam War, mm. and he ends up with shrapnel in his heart. He builds this suit of armor that will protect him from dying, mm -hmm. and he becomes the man in the Iron Mask. Not everyone has 
a stupid alternate <laughs> name uh, for their superhero name. Okay. It's just that he never thinks to call himself Iron Man, but he does think to form the Avengers, and the well, Avengers... I mean, there's a history for that. Oh, like a thief. That I'll steal from the French. Right, exactly. We see that like there is a group of people who would be the Avengers who form like a splinter cell during the Vietnam War to kind of break up the American government. Oh. That's the idea. The okay. Avengers. They were they were revolutionary rabble rousers. Okay. Uh, and you see representatives of them, Captain America. They say that Stephen Strange helped form the Avengers, oh. which is another weird, like, what? Why would you do that? I guess because you had no other, like, crazy seventh grade lunch table idea for how to make Doctor Strange gross and weird. So he's just <laughs> written off as a founding mem member of the Avengers who dies via Patriot Missile in a Quinjet. Right. I, I can't bring magic into this. If I bring magic into this, it's going to be all screwed it's, up. Yeah, no. And like, I feel like immediately, like, I'm starting to think of, like, Satan worshippers or occultists. He does have Damon Hellstrom show up in this book. Oh. So it's like, that's a thing. Anyway. So are there no powers? There, <laughs> it depends on what you call powers. Yes. There are abilities. It's not just, like, regular people who think that they can move oh, metal with their mind. Okay. But, oh, crazy people. Yeah, no, but there also are, like, mutants and stuff. Oh. And aliens. Well, and Iron Man has a suit. Yeah, But I'm thinking, like, does suit. Cap have the Super formula? Super serum? Yeah. Yeah. They don't really bring him up much. Oh, because I've seen the shield. The these. shield is there. I believe these are soldiers that pick up the paraphernalia that didn't blow up in the Quinjet. Oh. And so we're seeing, like, these people... Like celebrating the death of the Avengers. Right. Well, that man's okay. holding up Mjolnir, so clearly that right, <laughs> he ain't worthy. <laughs> no, yeah. Cap died. Okay, and it's just that's all. Yeah. Yes. Did he get the super soldier serum? Probably. Was he a hero of World War Two? Sure. Did it matter? <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, and Hank Pym died too. Yes, he did. Okay. Right. Yep. Uh, and in fact, someone betrayed the Avengers and didn't die, and uh, just goes into protective custody. Ah. That's the Scarlet Witch. Uh, they set that up later. They just, they just. There are moments in this book. It's not really a story. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out that, like where are we in time this. in this. I would say probably the the late 70s, maybe early 80s. Okay. So of Marvel. You mentioned the Vietnam War. Is that happening? It had happened. It had happened. Okay. And, and now, now it's over. It's over, and this is the aftermath mm -hmm. of these Avengers trying to do something against the government and getting blown up. By a missile. Yes. Okay. That's right. And does the it is this book like a how did we get here? Let's go back. Or no. Is it moving forward. From moves that forward point? from there. Okay. All yeah. Right. But the world was already messed up before the death of the Avengers. But the death of the Avengers kind of bolsters Sheldon's decision to write this book before he dies okay. about how messed up and stupid the world is. Okay. okay. So he goes into this bar, and it's a bar that he would never go into, but he needs a drink in order to take his pills to stave off the thing that's killing him, his disease. And so he goes in there and he gets some orange juice and then Wolverine shows up and he's like, give me a drink or I'll kill you. And he's just, he's just this horrible, gross monster. And the bartender makes fun of him and he goes, hey, hey show him your hand. Show him what you can do. And you see that there are some bones kind of protruding from his hand. They don't blast out in the form of claws. Right. They're not made of adamantium. They're just, just weird bones. They're just weird he's bones. He's got weird, sharpish bones. Yes. Not even sharp. It just looks like they're bones. They're just bones. They're just bones. They would hurt a little bit more if you got hit in the face. With oh, them. totally. Yeah. 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 He'd break your nose okay. if he punched you with the top of his hand. Right. <laughs> so this is another thing where it's like, did you read Ruins? It's only two issues. Doesn't take much. But like, there are a lot of references to him being this gross and terrible because he is dying from adamantium poisoning. And I feel like that's just, that's just Inception. You know, because he, <laughs> the death of Wolverine is because he's dying of adamantium poisoning because he doesn't have the healing factor. Okay. But in this, we don't really see evidence that he has adamantium at all. Yeah, he's so just, how did he get adamantium poisoning? Right, how could he get it? Nor do we see evidence of adamantium. So I, I just feel like the mutants of the Ruins universe are just kind of, they're truer in form to mutants than they are... <laughs> fun and cool and relatable. Right. But Wolverine also is like gross and he's, he has pus and stuff. So yeah. it could be that he was experimented on by the Canadian government. Right. And we see a couple of other kind of like snapshots of what Phil has been doing on his way to this bar. He's been collecting data. Uh, Black Panther was arrested for being a member of the Black Panther group. Right. right. Uh, Hawkeye was assassinated and you'll notice that it's exactly like the 
famous or infamous pay, uh, photo from the Vietnam War of uh, a soldier executing a prisoner of war. Yeah. Oh, I was hoping he would, you know, fly himself up into a jet. <laughs> right, explode. and say not like this. <laughs> a couple of characters just, they're, they're just taken off the page. Yeah, don't worry about Hawkeye, he's already dead. Right, Hawkeye died. Yeah. Did he die in the Quinjet? No, they assassinated him in the street. Yeah. Ex-Avenger Wanda Maximoff turns state's evidence in return for immunity from the Justice Department. Like, there she is being, like, kind of carted away by Secret Service. Right. So then, uh, Phil, and just Phil is hopping around the United States getting data for his book. And so he goes to Nevada to a prisoner of war camp. Hmm. So... Is this from Vietnam? No. Oh. No, this is the Kree invasion force that came with Captain Marvell. Oh. The Kree were going to... a while back. Yeah, but the Kree were going to invade... And something happened in space that screwed up their instruments. The U.S. shot nukes at them from orbit. And then when they landed and survived, they were all rounded up and put into prison camps in Nevada where we did nuclear testing sites. Oh. So these Cree prisoners of war are in these camps, riddled with cancer, just wasting away. Yikes. And Phil is visiting them to get some clarity on the situation. So aliens exist. Right. Gross. We blew them up with nukes and yep. put the survivors in, in nuclear irradiated in, 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 yeah. wasteland. In internment camps. Right. He meets with Captain Marvell, who is a character that we know. Yeah. Uh, he actually was not in favor of subjugation of mankind when he was on his way. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, but it's since, since changed. Since changed his tune. Uh, so the event that caused their instruments to fail, because they would have easily taken over because they're Cree, right, uh, and would have required the assistance of Captain Marvell, you know, going native, so to speak, and working with the humans to save us. But uh, the Silver Surfer got it in his head that he is entombed in this su this substance that makes him silver. Okay, and. He, it's 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 there so that he doesn't have to breathe in space. Okay. But, like a space suit. Right. But it's also his skin. You know what I mean? Because he was imbued with the power cosmic by by Galactus, and so as such, like he has to look like a superhero slash guy and fly around in space, but he can't like wear a clumsy suit. So it's just whatever reason makes Silver Surfer want to be able to breathe. Like he feels like, I used to breathe, I live out here in space. And so he claws at his own flesh to, to get this substance, whatever it is, off of him. And he ends up digging into himself and rupturing his body, which expels the power cosmic, which goes out into the universe and knocks out the Kree's systems. <laughs> Okay. Right. Like that just happens to happen like nearby to where the Kree are? Yes. It's hey, unrelated to... Well, I think that the idea is that Galactus and the Silver Surfer were on their way to Earth. Oh, when the Kree were At the too. same time as the Kree? As the Kree were coming too, yeah. But then you like Silver Surfer freaked out. Yeah, but then Surfer freaked out. For... And now Galactus okay. is on the side of the road asking directions to the gas You'll see Galactus in a, in a little bit. Okay. But that's But it's just whatever it's can just go wrong. another thing that happened in space. Do you remember the time yeah. that the Silver Surfer didn't claw his own body apart to knock out the Every Kree, time, yeah. Uh, the Kree directionals? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this time it happened. Right. You, well, you remember that time that he would never do that? Yeah, that's every time. And why would he suddenly get the idea in his head now? That doesn't matter. It's a, Don't you know those times where you suddenly become aware of things like, right. I haven't seen my nose in a while because <laughs> your vision blocks it out. Yeah. And then you look down and you're like, oh yeah, there it is. Right. And then for the next five minutes, you're like, fuck, there's my nose. I can see it everywhere. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's exactly what it is. And that's why he does this. But it's just, it's, you're, you're, welcome. you're not meant to dwell on it. You're not meant to be like, why right. would he do that? How, how convenient is that? It's right. so stupid. It's just a fucked up thing, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> You know, Moving on. The Kree, <laughs> they're, 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 they're in a holocaust all their own. That's horrific. How did that happen? Silver Surfer. And that happened a long time ago. Right, right. Okay. So, Oof. gross, horrible. Every flashback is as horrible or more horrible than the thing you're already finding out about. <laughs> right. You know, and that, of course, breaks Mar Marvel's spirit. He's just, get, that, anyway, that's what, that's what happened. Now get out of here. Phil moves to the next thing. And we see, you know, a kind of snapshot of what this America is like. There is a, you know, a new president after Nixon, and that is Professor or President X. It's just Charles Xavier became president. Cool. 
clearly <laughs> used his mental powers to manipulate it and became president. Right. Warren Worthington III, aka the Angel, is his kind of like bodyguard liaison. He's obviously seen like pushing Xavier's wheelchair. Okay. And some people would suggest that maybe you could see something at the bottom of Worthington's coat, you know, because it's indicating he has wings. Oh. Because uh, back in the day, Angel used to wrap his wings around him and then wear a suit over them. Mm. So no one would tell he was the Angel, so he could, like, walk around. Right. Yeah, but I feel like wings would make you at least twice as wise. Well, true, but... Well, maybe he's really skinny, though, so it balances out. Exactly. Well, he has to be, you know. He's got hollow bones. <laughs> he doesn't really, but he would... In this world. In this world, yeah. He's trying to push Xavier, and then he just trips, and he just shatters. He is Mr. Glass. That's right. So that is a thing. Just okay. okay. President X. And it's no one can photograph him. No, you know, he's, <laughs> he's much more horrible than he normally is. Right. Is there time in this episode for a flap job joke? Sure. Okay. Take it away. No, that, that's it. <laughs> well, it's got, like, trees around. It's got, like, pine trees. So it's almost like it's in, like, I don't know, Westchester, oh, New is. York? Oh, no, the, pre the, the President X moved D.C. to Westchester, New York. It's <laughs> it's just it's just the Xavier Mansion. Oh, okay. man, that's awesome. Oh, is that Marvell there on the left? Yeah, yes. that's him. Oh, okay. yeah, the, this oh is he's like, leaking. This is the end yeah. of the description of what happens to the Cree War. That's right. And then this is. And then so th there's a reference to the Genosian War. Yeah. That's all we get. Oh, uh, okay. So Magneto's dead? Well, no. no. He's alive and he's fighting the U.S.? Maybe? He's, he, he's causing trouble. Okay. But we'll see him in a little we'll bit. We'll see. All right. So uh, Phil goes to meet with a contact at D.C. He meets with Nick Fury. Okay. And Nick Fury's there. And Nick Fury is just a crazy old veteran slash CIA spook. He's even more crazy than everybody else. Uh, right. And he goes off on this whole tear about... You know, how everything's ruined and how uh, everybody is a monster and how <laughs> the, the U.S. government taught him how to eat human flesh for what? the first time. Like, basically, that somewhere in the field, he had to resort to cannibalism. It's right. just like, boy, you think Nick Fury is scary and, and, and gross, but what about in the Ruins universe? He also eats people and stuff, or, or at least he has. Fury uh, asks Sheldon, like, what are you even doing here? Like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm writing a book. And Fury's like, oh, you're writing a book. And he just punches him in the stomach. What? Pulls out his gun. He's like, I'd kill you right now. But instead, he shoots a wolf or a dog that's what? near Sheldon. He's like, I just saved your life. And then... Why well, is it's there... DC, so maybe there are random Yeah, wolves. this is random dogs running around. Right. I mean, there's no more White House Once there, the White so House left, everything went to shit. Everything went to hell, yeah. Now it's just dogs... Just, just dogs roaming the street and attacking elderly people. So... <laughs> we're no longer in the nation's capital. Now it's just the worst traffic in the world. Yeah. Not even a grid like New York. No, it's a mess. The thing's like a gear. So... <laughs> Uh, Fury just says a bunch of nonsense about things he did in the war, Captain America, uh, how ironic it is that we killed America with a Patriot missile. Mm -hmm. You know, all that stuff. Okay. Uh, they were approached... I was just amazed that it worked. Right. Well, I mean, uh, you know, because it's the ruined universe. And oh, yeah, universe. They don't have, like, shields or anything. So in the middle of their conversation, they're approached by Jean Grey, who is a Once prostitute. You pull out a gun and shoot a dog or wolf... <laughs> It is no longer a conversation. You're being held hostage. Yeah, no. Phil is actually just listening. It's a pretty yeah. one-sided conversation. But Jean Grey shows up, and she's dressed like Marvel Girl, and she's a prostitute, and she's like, I could make your wildest dreams come true for 20 bucks. What do you want? And uh, Fury just shoots her and kills her. What? Yeah. Just, ugh. You'll see, actually, the like how... Does he, does he put 20 bucks down afterwards and be like, that's there. what I wanted? That's the hottest thing I've ever seen. No. He instead shoots himself in the head. Oh. And wraps up that little interaction. So it's just like, it's just a bunch of stuff that happens. It's not a Jesus story. Christ. The through line is Phil Sheldon, for no reason, because he's a character from Marvels, wants to write the Marvels book. It's like he's compelled. He's like, right. I'm, in, I'm, fr I'm Phil Sheldon from Marvels. I write a book about the superheroes, <laughs> but the heroes are gross monsters. But here I go anyway. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to do this. <laughs> but I'm compelled because I'm the character from Marvels who does the stuff in Marvels. What? Puppet master, yeah, is he's wielding me. me. <laughs> so, uh, so weird. Yeah, so, so Fury shoots himself in the Why head. Why isn't she Gray like use her mind power? I guess maybe she doesn't have. Maybe she doesn't mind have powers. her, or maybe they, maybe they're weak, or maybe she's like a fortune teller. It doesn't Why matter. Why is she hanging out with Professor X? Right. He didn't bring her to the White House. Oh no, there's random decisions made about certain mutants. You know, like why is why is Warren the Golden Boy? 
but Cyclops isn't. You'll see Cyclops and a few other select mutants, but why is Gene not with Scott? It doesn't right. make any sense. It's, it's super like, well, you know what? And then, and then, oh, and then, and, and then Jean shows up and she's a prostitute and they just murder her in the street. And, and, then, and, then, and then Fury just shoots himself in the head and he's like, nah, ha, ha. And then we just cut to a full page, like Weekly World News, National Enquirer type article where they found, a, you know, they were taking telescopic photos of Mars and they spotted Galactus's lifeless body just floating in space. And they're like, God died. And he's just floating in space. Because they don't have any explanation for it. There's yeah. a man up there. Yeah, well, a giant he's not man. wearing a giant robe with a big white beard, no. but we're pretty sure that's God. Pretty sure that's God, and he is fucking dead. Yeah, because Silver Surfer died, and now he doesn't know which planet to eat. No, Silver Surfer must have died on the way to Earth. I am a giant big baby. I can't make decisions <laughs> for myself. I'm Galactus. I need to know. I need Why to won't you feed me? Give me my bottle. <laughs> yeah, and they didn't, so he's just, just fucking starve dead. To death. Yep. <sighs> yeah, that's some so God. So weird. Yeah. What? Okay. So that's what happens with Galactus. So you get the you get that little little story wrapped up. Like the reference Porn to Star Enchantress. Yeah. Did she kill producer with magic? Yep. No time to draw anything, but we'll just into you know what? How about how about the Enchantress? Is there magic in the universe? Maybe. Or maybe. Anyway, not. she's a porn star. <laughs> Isn't that dark? See? See what I'm talking about? Starting, starting to see the problem with Warren Ellis, perhaps, <laughs> and his issues with women. Well, yes, there's absolutely no <laughs> strong female character in this story. Yeah. Uh, nor is there any great female representation outside of them Fucking being victimized. Scarlet Witch betrayed the Avengers. Jean Grey is a prostitute who gets shot remorselessly by Nick Fury. And Enchantress is a porn star. Off screen. Off screen. Yes. Oh, and you'll see These more. These are the women of Marvel. Oh, there's more. We'll eventually, we'll meet Rick Jones and his wife. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, she's just a trick-turning drug addict. Mm. In fact, that's the next scene. Ah. Uh, Be- uh, Phil goes to visit Rick Jones to ask him about his experiences because Rick Jones, of course, is the catalyst yeah, for the Hulk. Yeah, he knew Captain right. Oh, never mind. Well, no. no. Hulk, yeah, well, yeah. maybe he did. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't come up. Yeah. But, uh, Not here. We're, we're, we're just going to focus on the Rick Jones of the Hulk mythos. Right. So he goes to Rick Jones. Rick Jones is there. He's doing drugs. He's in this, like, kind of, you know, seedy den of an apartment the woman who would be his lo- his wife in the mainstream Marvel universe is also there, and she's she's it's hopped not up to Betty Brandt, is it? It's not. No, no, okay. no. Betty Brandt is Hulk's wife. Here's my piece, Marlo. Yeah. She's cool. She's cool. Yeah, she's an old Dickensian <laughs> character who's going to be visited by ghosts. Oh, sorry, That's no. Marley. That's Marley. She's visiting. <laughs> so Phil interviews Rick Jones, essentially about the origin of the Hulk, because mm-hmm. he heard that Rick Jones was present at like a pretty messed up military experiment. And he wants to know more. And Rick is obviously traumatized, but not just traumatized. He's also been downing this this mysterious liquid, mm-hmm. and it's kind of indicating that it's he's an alcoholic. Yeah. But in fact, he's yeah, actually I was taking. Say we call that whiskey. Yeah, no, it's anti. It, it, it's it's cancer medication. Oh. He's basically a morphine addict. Oh. And it's because he was at the heart of a nuclear testing site for right. a gamma bomb. Okay. Uh, and so we tell like this. He should be in the internment camp. Yeah. Well, that's a different. Yeah, different. Well, actually, it's Nevada, so it might have been the same bomb site. Yeah. So he tells the story about how he was, you know, in this continuity playing his guitar at the site. Uh, Bruce Banner drove the motorcycle up to stop him, push them out of the way. Bruce gets the brunt of the blast. Oh wow! Bruce Banner's suddenly cool. He rides a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think he steals a motorcycle. It's not even his. Even cooler. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> he gets all the chicks. So. Uh, he, all that stuff happens, but instead of him turning into a big green rage monster like in the comic books, he turns into a mass, like a living mass of tumors. Oh, God. He just explodes into a Hulk-like teratoma. Ew. And it is just, oh, it's just a horror fest. But Rick Jones, of course, was there, and he gets the fallout, so he's just slowly dying from cancer as well. Right, so instead of turning into a horrible monster, he just gets to die slowly of cancer. Yeah. Well, Rick's Rick, like, yeah, Rick I, and if I don't keep downing this morphine, I'm going to turn into that. <laughs> right, maybe. I don't know. But uh, he, he implicates the U.S. government by saying that he didn't die. Right. And they just took him. And so he oh. has been somewhere in this agonizing pain since then. They, right. they like won't let him die. Oh, gross! For what? Why not? Oh, well, because like what the hell? It's an explosion. It's supposed die. to kill him. It did. It did. It doesn't we turn people into these. Study it. We gotta look up. Yeah, what's going on with this guy? We don't find out. It's not like he burst through the wall and saves Phil at the end of the book. Right. So, uh, okay. So Phil leaves and he goes out into the snow and he trips over the dead body of the Punisher. 
that's it. Just Punisher dies. Also Punisher. Also Punisher. And he's already dead. And he's just a corpse that Phil accidentally trips over. Ha! Huh? You can't... What? You can't walk through the Marvel Universe without tripping over some hero. That's yeah. right. That's there's, right. There's nothing like... This time, literally. Crazy yeah. and fucked up about it. He's just dead. He's just dead. Well, because like, he's not really a superhero. Right. Like, he's just... He's a murderer. He's just a Charles Bronson character. Like, what would he do in the real world? He'd die. Oh, did he finally kill himself? No, he has, like, bullets in his chest. He doesn't even remark on the Punisher. No. So the Punisher's not even a character. It's just a dude wearing a Punisher shirt. Yes. I mean, it is Punisher. Right. Because no one else would be that. Right. But Phil doesn't know who that is, nor does he regard him in any way. Right. It's just, he's dead, too. It's just, it's... it's, it's That's for us. It's symbolic. Yeah, it's for us, and I think it's also symbolic of, like, the world he lives in, where it's just, like, you literally can't take two steps without tripping over something Some dead body messed up or... and gross. Yeah. So Phil's on a plane and he sees Valkyrie flying a Pegasus in the sky. Oh. Nothing weird or gross or twisted about this until she gets sucked into the plane's engine. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, right? But like, no, he just sees her. That's it. Yeah, nothing gross or weird. Oh, okay. I don't get it. Why so. does she get unscathed? But like, hey, you know what? Female character. Oh, yeah. There you and go. She's she not doesn't get terrible. All up. Like but well, maybe... she also is, she's just pretty. She doesn't do anything. She doesn't yeah. contribute to the story. Well, maybe this is like, uh, well, th the earth is like a fallen wasteland, but the heaven is still up there right. with the gods. Yeah, and, but like Thor and they is a joke by. and well, a weird, gross monster. Well, he is. But this is just to let you know, like there are gods and right not there is still up. magic and gods yeah. and stuff i mean we have Galactus. but we don't get it right here <laughs> it doesn't like, come here it doesn't come here and help us it just flies overhead and yes waves and goes reminds away. us how small we are yeah so phil sees this out the window and he turns to the woman next to him raven darkholm and he's like hey did you see that uh, Ms. darkholm did you see that it's mystique oh. and she's trying not to lose it but he breaks her concentration and as such, she just starts morphing into different people, like the T-1000 at the end of T-2. Oh, just, God. Like she, she needs to take every ounce of her concentration to, to assimilate one form. What? So he just happens to be sitting next to Mystique on an airplane? Yeah. There's just so many characters in this world. And by talking to her, he causes her to... Unravel. Unravel. Yeah. How does she do anything? Why would right. she get on an airplane? Well, she was going to meet someone oh. when they landed. Okay. Hi, miss. Welcome to Applebee's. What would you like for dinner? <laughs> okay. How did you even get here in one piece? So exactly. Anyway, she, she, she just comes apart. Blah. And, uh, you know, they, they arrest her or take her down. Okay. There's like already marshals. They're on a plane. The, yeah, there's marshals on the plane. They take her. And they take her away. Yep. Okay. When they get there, when they land, there's already a media circus. There's people everywhere. And, uh, you know, the, the Secret Service or the, uh, the federal agents are trying to get her away and they push this seemingly innocuous old man in a trench coat very hard out of the way. Mm -hmm. That disrupts Eric Lenscher's anti-magnetism machine that he has on his chest. And Jesus Christ. It breaks it, and they think it's a bomb, so they all spring into action. But what it actually is doing is it's inhibiting his magnetism yeah. powers. It's, it's so he doesn't like just collect all the metal around him. So like fillings are flying out of people's teeth, and then the plane comes apart, and it just flies at him and just explodes. Magneto is just like a walking magnet. Everything just just literal huge pieces of metal are just hitting him until eventually he just he just rips the whole plane apart. Oh my god. He gets three pages. Oh, okay. <laughs> of how crazy, epic, and powerful and gross Magneto becomes. Uh, uh. Yeesh. And presumably he was there to pick up slash meet with Mystique. Mystique, right. But that Oof. was the story of Magneto. That's messed up. Yep, but how about this? Now another thing. So Phil goes to a prison. Phil's like, I just need to stop. Yeah, right? Yeah, Everywhere I, I, I go. Stop going places. You're a harbinger of doom. Yeah, Jesus. In a world of doom. So he goes to this prison. He's going to lift up his eye and there's going to be like another like terrible universe inside of him and that's what's <laughs> causing all of this. There we go. Uh, so he goes to this prison. The warden is Wilson Fisk, the kingpin. <laughs> uh, the prisoners are mutants. It's all the X-Men. Uh, and they have been experimented on or tortured to inhibit their abilities. You such know, like, as they are. They literally sear Cyclops' eyes closed. Oh. Like they don't sew them. They like melt the skin on his eyes so they're sealed closed. Quicksilver would be fast if they hadn't cut off his legs and arms, so he's just a torso. Oh my god. Uh, Kurt uh, Wagner, the Nightcrawler, is like eating pieces of himself. It's just, ew. And that's his world. Shadowcat 
uh, Kitty Pride, she phased through like the wall and organs came out. You know what? I mean? Like she got stuck. She got fucked up. Yeah. Like, phasing. Yeah. Everything's gross and horrible. So like this is where the X Men go. And rumor has it that President X comes here once in a while and just listens to them or or talks to them. That's his interaction with the X Men. Why, why, but he's the president. Why wouldn't he save them? Right. Uh, because he's the president, Ethan. Because he's gross. He's corrupt he's evil. and terrible. Oh. I, I, I honestly don't. Why is Wilson Fisk running a, a Texan prison for the X-Men? Yeah, what is he even doing in Texas? He's a New Yorker. Why would he even be here? Because he needs to be here. Because we got to put him in the book and uh, we didn't really have another place for him. No. So and I wanted to use prison. him and Fisk is a yeah. bad guy. You know, well, oh, why yeah. wouldn't he go to Texas? Who cares? So Phil takes like a minute and he's at like a brook. Mm. Just kind of going over his notes. And he's approached by a little girl who is kind to him. I don't know. Okay. Does he lose his mind? No! Like, this is impossible! Oh, God. No, she's just nice and gives him a she's flower. She's also horrifying. Oh, wait, this is the Frankenstein moment. Yes, it is. It's exactly the moment from the Frankenstein movie where the little girl approaches Frankenstein, offers him a flower, they throw it in the river, uh, they run out of beautiful things to throw in the river, so Frankenstein throws her in the river. Uh, instead, uh, he <laughs> just gives her a flower and they hug. I don't know why. Maybe because Phil Sheldon is the monster. You know, he's just as cracked and broken as everybody else in this world. But there are, like, moments of purity and light in this world. I, I don't know. But, like, I'll let you be the judge. It just, it happens. She has no name that is specific and it represents another character. Right. He's just taking notes of what he saw and what he did. And then she approaches and says, like, you know, you should have dinner with us. And hugs him. Yeah. Well, as she, she comes by as he's writing neural heim hemorrhage oh brain ripped out <laughs> yep uh, th- uh through eyes and mouth so he's like writing this like horrible thing but it's in this idyllic setting and yes. this girl approaches him all sweet and innocent it's, I assume he's talking about a, the Hulk too it's a contrast between the horrors of what he's documenting and uh, the beauty of nature the beauty of yeah. what's going on around him yeah. right but why but why though <laughs> Exactly. That's his whole book. Okay. And then he's like, well, I don't have time to do a whole story. So, like, here's a couple other things I did in between. You know, like, I visited Donald Blake, who's crazy. I visited Emma Frost, who's a child kidnapper who also experiments on children. Like, she thinks she's psychic. What a lunatic. You know, th- that kind <laughs> of thing. Uh, and then we go to a circus. And Oh, boy. Th- the circus. This isn't the kid's family, right? What kid? The little girl? No. Okay, no, good. She's unrelated to anything. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't like, you should have dinner with us. Yeah. What the go- actual hills have eyes? <laughs> yeah. Right? That'd be amazing. From the fucking circus. No, no, no. They, he goes to a great. circus. You know, we don't, we don't have time to focus on Black Panther, but, like, we can do <clears throat> Princess Python. She has sex with snakes in the circus. Oh, gross. Gross. Uh, so, Phil, yeah. a- after seeing this, still remains to watch Johnny Blaze do his most spectacular feat of stunt work of all time. He douses his head in gasoline. <laughs> Gets on his motorcycle and sets his head on fire and then does a stunt and then as he's dying rides the motorcycle off into the night. <laughs> what? And just dies. That's the best image of Ghost Rider I've ever heard of. <laughs> he's like, ah! That's what? Ghost Rider! That's not Ghost Rider, so that's Go- a crazy man. Ghost Rider comes into existence and dies. And dies. As, as Phil watches the whole thing. As yeah. he shows up. Yeah. Right. So maybe Phil is like the harbinger of the world of Marvels. I don't know. It's so I know. weird. You know the people that like light themselves on fire and then like they're running. So like the alcohol burns, but they never really, I'll just do that. Yeah. I'll ride real fast and I won't burn. I get the impression that he does it to kill himself. <laughs> like he, he goes, this is my final act. Right. Why does he do that? One last stunt. Yeah. To thrill them. I, I guess because, on, because his name is Johnny Blaze and he's supposed to be the Ghost Rider. Right. Why hasn't it happened yet? Why isn't my head bursting in flames? Right. Why am I not a skeleton? Right. He okay. does it to become Ghost Rider. Well, he also has horrible scarring on his face, so I think he does oh. it. I think he does it a lot. Okay, but this time, but this time he, does it he dies. Right. Okay. <sighs> okay. So, <laughs> moving on. Moving on. So you know, Phil just keeps. Meeting more people and getting into more adventures. Uh, Seeing more fucked up shit. So he goes to sleep, and when he sleeps, he dreams of the world as it should be. Mm. And we see... And it's not its not that he sees the Marvel Universe. Right. Nor does he see Marvels. He sees the world, like, through his own, in his own universe's eyes, as it should be. 
he is given images of things that he shouldn't be able to see, like Iron Man and Captain America, but like they're defeating Nixon. And you know, they're, <laughs> the scores of people are celebrating them and stuff like that. So it's like, this is the world as it should be. This is the world that I imagine. Right. Like if, if I the world's see gonna Captain America kick Richard Nixon, Nixon in the butt. face. Like, if it's, so if, he literally just has a dream. He has a dream. He has a dream and we get to see it. And we get to see it. Like, so weird. Phil okay. continues to write his book or gather information for his book. So the story is kind of falling apart because now we're just seeing like snippets of That's stuff. That's it. Well, that's yeah. the whole thing. Was, yeah. Phil's yeah. dying. He decides to write a book. He or he has been writing a book, and we see the 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 the, 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 the material that he's gathering, and just focusing on that. Like the only through line is just him. There's we didn't even really get a good explanation as to why. Mystique needed to take a plane to go see Magneto or no. why Magneto thought that he would not have a problem. Well, he didn't expect to get punched in the chest and That's have true. his thing broken. Right, but like, why wouldn't he think that? If, if it's that delicate that he gets <laughs> shoved by a cop. Right, like, Look, yeah, I have fart. magnet powers. I'm not an engineer. Right, clearly. Right. So then he goes to interview Benjamin J. Grimm. Oh. And, okay. Uh, Grimm lives in the Rocky Mountains and he's just kind of this recluse. The Rocky Mountains. Yeah, that's right. Uh, no. no. So he goes and interviews him and he talks about the Fantastic Four. Or rather, he talks about his comrades who would have become the Fantastic Four. Uh, ben Grimm is not a rock And monster. he's not Rocky. No, 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 he didn't go. He didn't go to space? No. Oh. No, his, uh, his colleague, Reed Richards. No, we were going to go into space, and then a giant silver surfer guy ripped exploded. himself apart, and the Kree were exploded by nukes, and we're and like, that, you know what? Let's delay the launch till tomorrow. I, I think that happened after this happened. But, the, mm. you know, Reed and Sue and Johnny were part of their, uh, you know, cosmic space flight. <laughs> In this context, it was the space race, and they're trying to beat the Russians, and they don't have time uh, to do safety protocols, and uh, they ask Grimm to fly the ship because Grimm is an ace pilot, right. and he like, says nah. no. Uh -huh. He's like, the ship is not aerodynamic enough, and it's not safe enough to be able to maneuver the way it needs to. I am not doing that. Oh, do they challenge uh. it? They do, kind of. It's more just they go up, they take this other guy to help them named Von Doom. <laughs> when they okay. go up there, they are bombarded by cosmic rays, but instead of getting superpowers, they just die, <laughs> but they die through their fantastic powers. They die like, in ways that are like the powers. Right, like Johnny bursts into flames, Sue disappears, and they don't find her until someone tripped over her when they all crash landed. Mm. Uh, Reed stretched and then died. From stretching, because you can't stretch your body right. and survive. So right. he's just a weird, horrible looking skeleton. Ew. Oh, is Doom still alive? No, Doom also died. His body, like, turned in on itself. <laughs> it okay. became its own metal casing. It's, that's like that horrible movie, but it, this is more just like it just turned inside out and he died. Uh, and Ben is, like, haunted by the regret he feels because he knows in his head, I would have died. It would not have worked. Right, but he thinks like maybe if, if I'd maybe gone, I if I had gone, them. maybe I could have, maybe I would have been a better pilot maybe would have and would have avoided. Flown it. well enough to not have that happen. Exactly. I would have no, dodged ben. the cosmic rays. Yeah, no, Ben, it would not have worked out for you. Yeah, can't believe it doesn't still live on Yancey Street. No. <laughs> See, this is too bad because I kind of want to see what horrible way he would have died. Like, I agree. He would turn into rocks, and rocks are dead, so he would be dead. I guess it wouldn't be that horrible. Mm -hmm. just, they would just find a, a pile of rocks. Yeah, a pile of rubble in the shape of a man. Yeah, that actually is in Fan Stick. When everybody gets their powers, he's just a pile of rocks, and then like he emerges from the pile. Right. And it's like a really cool look. Yeah. Unfortunately, that movie is also utterly terrible. <laughs> I, I still never it saw yet. it. Yeah. It's real bad. Like, real bad. But he looks pretty but cool. But that one scene looks cool. That one moment is cool. All right, I'll look that up later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just watch that scene on YouTube. So uh, Phil goes back to New York, and he's got his plan. He's got the name of his book. And then he realizes he forgot to take the medicine he needs to stave off the disease that's killing him. And before... Uh, oh, my God, how could I forget? Because he's been oh, so... Oh, my bonitis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So he, <laughs> he curses Peter Parker's name because Why? Peter Parker uh, years ago had done some radiation experiments with spiders and caught this horrible disease from the spider bite he got and he didn't manifest it until after he had gone to the Daily Bugle and shaken Phil's hand and transferred the disease to oh. Phil Sheldon. But Peter was, of course, 
uh, consumed by the disease and he is he, he became just in, like a inverted Spider-Man costume-esque horrible you know, skin rash before he died and uh, and then Phil uh, succumbs to the disease and drops the notes to his book and they flutter away in the breeze as he dies ingloriously in the alleyways of New York. So Spider-Man kills him. Spider-Man killed. Peter Parker, Peter Parker killed, killed Phil Sheldon. By accident. Lol. Yeah, without even knowing about it. Lol. So there have to be other people <laughs> who that have, have yeah. died because of that. Absolutely. Well, yeah, yeah. But he's one of them. He's one of them. He's the one we care about. And he's the reason why this horrible book never gets published. That's right. Yes, we can blame Spider-Man for that. Good yes, job. Yes, that's right. Well, just like Phil, blame Spider-Man for the end of the Age of Marvels. Why? Because he thought that these heroes were there to deliver them from their own uh, misery and uh, just self-destruction, but uh, then he couldn't save the one right. blonde girl that he liked. Right. Which was bullshit. Yes, which is bullshit. Marvels no more. So, yeah. That's the end. Ruins. What? Oh no, my medicine! Ah! Oh! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh no, I only have one page! Why would I forget to take it? It's so crazy. I remember to take it every other time. I'll literally die if I don't take it. I was so busy being a miserable person that I forgot to take it. Wow. Uh. <laughs> Moral okay. ruins. Uh, comic pop. <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> It's like, I always hated Peter Parker, yeah. the Weasley kid. Like, it wasn't even no. that he gave me this thing. It's that I hated him anyway. I hated him anyway. He was always just this Weasley little kid who showed up. He was always smiling. What is the I point assume, of this? I assume he <laughs> lost his eye because, like, the spider bit his eyeball. No, the spider no. bit Peter, and Peter transferred it through Peter. skin-to-skin contact. Yeah, the eye thing is unrelated. Yeah, well, the eye thing, he must have also lost it the same way because he loses it in uh, Marvels yeah. through a superhero fight. Right. Uh, it's just a piece of debris hits him. Well, it's so we know who he is. Yes. 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 Hey, that Phil guy had an eye patch. Make sure he's got an eye patch. Yeah. And he's also an old white guy so like how come you don't think he's Nick Fury? Like, <laughs> but anyway. Ruins and, I, and what's weird is it's not like what? this came much later. Like it was a year later so yeah. they were like man this Marvels thing is hot. Let's make a horrible misery fest that is a companion to that thing we like that everyone enjoys. Hey, did you enjoy that story? Yeah. Would you like it if I ruined it for you? Uh, here. No. Oh, it's already here, and it's two page. It's two books. Yeah, it, it's just, it's just a little confusing. Just, as well. yeah. I don't get why we want this. It's just kind of cool to see how messed up everything is because they never let you do that, and it's like, but they did. They did it in a whole story. Yeah, it's called a long Ruins. time ago. So, you remember when I said there's nothing greater than seeing something terrible depicted beautifully? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's not what this is. Mm -mm. Like, oh, no, it's depicted horribly. When you're horribly. reading a story or when you're watching a movie and you see a terrible moment mm -hmm. and it affects you, yeah. sometimes it, it hits even harder than a beautiful moment. Right. Well, emotionally, not, yeah, it That could. usually has to be, like, with something that yeah, but, you are attached to. Right. Well, yeah, you're yeah, attached. There is no attachment. No, but you, yeah, well, but you're, you're attached the to the context characters. you have. You were like, I love Hulk. Like, what, oh, Hulk. no. Look what happened to Hulk. And, and it's amazing to see that. Yeah. Right. Like, that is beautifully depicted. Well, it's 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 relying on your connection to the character, yes. not to the history of the character in the story, no. but to the character that you know from With the your, context in your you have universe. For yeah. yeah, but but you can separate yourself from it because you're like, yeah, but it's not real. Right, has no redeeming qualities. Well, I mean, like the art's pretty good, and yeah, uh, it's good. And I don't I say the story on its own. Has the story has there is well, a story. There is no story. There's the story, story is just a bunch of stuff that happens. Yeah, it, if there were if they were able to flush out the little vignettes mm -hmm. a little bit more. Maybe there could be something interesting there. Yeah, but they won't. Like, yeah. they, they, they never and, will. And I don't want them to try. They yeah. never will now. And even if they did, it would not be nearly as satisfying because you know where it ends. It's, it's like the Tales from the Dark Multiverse yeah. where you're like, I know it will end bad because yes. that's the conceit of the universe it's in. <laughs> right. With this, it's like... Well, yeah, but the conceit of the universe that you always read about is that it'll end good. Right. Well, Maybe we want to see what happens if it ends bad. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't. It's not like what if the Green Goblin beat Spider Man. It's what if yeah, everything what if it was... you like actually was bad. <laughs> like, well, actually, actually, like it's like your favorite food, but actually, it's made of poop. You know, like. <laughs> But yeah, that's and not some people like but that. But that's not anything. Like that's just a, that's a that's a hy that, that, that's a weird hypothetical challenge. Right. And it's turned into a comic book they charge people for. <laughs> so 
Can you make that the title of this episode? What if all the food you liked was poop? Yeah. Uh, uh, no. It could be the subtitle, maybe. <laughs> It'll be... Come on, that'd be a great clickbait. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't want to click on that. That sounds gross. Yeah. But yeah, so Marvel Ruins is just... I mean, it's, it lives up to the title. It is ruined. It is... Everything is in ruins. It's not clear why everything is in ruins. I mm -hmm. guess that's my other problem with this. Is like, but why though? Like, why right. did it happen this way? The only thing I like about this is that Spider-Man throwing up the, the whips. Yeah. <laughs> well, and his skin yeah. condition looks like the like it like looks his like costume. his suit. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that fucking gross? Isn't and that stupid? fucking weird? Yeah. Yeah. No, that is. That yeah, is. I mean, like, you, you got me on the conceit, <laughs> but uh, you know, do I care? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't know. Missed opportunities, I would say, that's because true. like. You you show Ghost Rider laid, laid his face on fire, but you don't do anything interesting. Like why though? Right. And it's like no. There's sometimes no fucked up shit happens. Like That's is right. that the message? Like there is no why. I, I, like people are just monsters. Yeah. And sometimes you turn into a mutant, and life is just horrible. And right. I'm gonna show you that. Yeah. Like, I I don't know. Well, uh, okay. I I, I get Ghost. this very strong feeling that this was not so much a endeavor through the purity of story and more of a personal challenge <laughs> where Warren Ellis read Marvels and was like, wow, because this came out before Kingdom Come and kind of right. put Alex Ross on the map for a lot right. of people. Yeah. Uh, of course, he had also done, one of his first works was actually a Terminator book, mm. which I have. <laughs> but uh, a lot of people saw Alex Ross depicting superheroes like realistically for the first time. Yeah. And Ellis is like, well, what if it was like really real? Yeah, what if, like in real life, if you got mutated by radiation from a bomb, like you'd you would be wouldn't... like covered in tumors and stuff. Yeah. Like you wouldn't be yeah, strong. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't be cool. Yeah. No. You'd be a monster. Right. And then you'd die. And not like or a not. monster, like they say, like the Hulk is a monster. No, like a real monster. Like a monster, like a scary, horrible monster that dies. Like, what? <laughs> Yeah. Why? And I just, I can't believe it got through. No, that's what's so weird. And I can't believe that it was you, like they let them use Marvels as the template. There's just, there's a lot of really interesting unanswered questions about ruins. Yeah. And uh, I don't care to answer them. I just, it's just this weird thing. And I love that it's like crammed into this Marvels compendium. For me, that concentration camp was sort of the high point in terms of like, you had something to say. Yes, that's a concept. Yeah. Well, and especially I that was Fury. You could tell, yeah, well, yeah or Fury. Fury's like off the grid. Yeah, it, that's I'm like, well, okay, but what does this say about our world, like in a larger scope? Right. Nothing. The internment camp does at least. Well, because it opens with like this whole criticism of America and like where we end up, and you know, I feel like there was a story there. There mm -hmm. might have been something that Ellis was trying to say about the United States. Yeah. And maybe they didn't let him, or maybe <laughs> he lost his nerve, or maybe he. Delved into it and was like, I have nothing really to say. Uh, it turns out, you know, know turns out it's boring. I don't really have much yeah, to say. like I, I, I thought I had a story here, and uh, it's, it's. I remember boring. in high school, Ben and I talked about this music video, and we didn't care what song or music video it was about. Do you remember this? We were talking about. I go, you'll be really cool. And there's the, the whole music video is about these people, and they're like protesting, and you can't tell like what city it's in. It's like in this odd kind of like futuristic city, and there's these these like Gestapo SWAT guys, and they're like they're doing all this like crazy Nazi esque stuff. And then the last like shot of the video is it's they, America. they turn around and the back of their of their flak jacket is the is the, is the American flag. And we're like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> That's Deep. what this is. <laughs> 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 like when I had that idea, I, I wanna say it was like freshman year, we were like, yeah. ah fuck <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be fucking that'd be uh, blow some minds? And we didn't, and that's the, that's exactly as deep. You know, it was like, oh, what song? Doesn't matter. Who cares? What's the song about? Who cares? What's the idea the, is that, like, we're a Nazi state. Is that we, th yeah, is that you, you, oh, you thought it was that, but it's us. But it's actually us. I, it's the a mirror. <laughs> I flipped the script on you. You dumbass. Anyway. Well, what's funny is like there are a lot of music videos like that. Oh yeah. Like where it's just like this doesn't have anything to do with the music. Well, that's every music. Someone video. just had a thing like, would it be fucking cool yeah. if it turned out that? Yeah. Blah. <laughs> it's a bullet, and it goes through like all this stuff, like a wall or a vase. 
And there's like children and some kind of camp. Actually, that has that has more of a narrative. Yeah, like, it does. Like somebody, like the cop drops the gun. Yeah, yeah that actually, I, no, Freak on a Leash actually <laughs> does have a message. Yep. It does. It's not super like complicated. No, it is, it's it, cool. It, is a well, bit it doesn't connect exactly with the song. No, no. But the music video itself has, it has a story. story. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't really connect, except that every beat is another it's, bullet impact. And like, that's pretty fucking cool. Ruins. Ruins. See you next week. <laughs> oh god, we have to do this again next week? No, that's it. It's over. It's over! It's, over. it's done. Ruin. Bury it.